Microsoft Build 2023 Recap, GitHub Advanced Security for Azure DevOps, Make Your Own VPN, and a pick of the week that brings us back to a simpler time. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source topics. Please like and subscribe. All right, we've been off for a few weeks because I've been knee deep in helping out with stuff for Microsoft Build, which coincidentally is also the shirt I'm wearing this week. Isn't it good? These were like the official conference shirts, so good. All right, the Build is over, so we've got tons of stuff to cover and some other fun topics too. Let's dig in. All right, so Microsoft Build took place this week at the Seattle Convention Center, and I had such a good time learning about the latest news and stuff from our friends at Microsoft. I got to see a lot of my fellow hubbers, and most importantly, I got to connect with new and old friends in the community. And all of the sessions are still available online at build.microsoft.com, but I've got links down below for all that, but I'm gonna go through a couple of highlights. So. Unsurprisingly, AI was the star of the show. Like, we could have called it Build AI, and most of the announcements did involve AI in some way. But I think one of the coolest announcements was that Microsoft announced that they're adopting the same open standard that OpenAI uses for ChatGPT plugins across all the various Microsoft Copilots. And so that means that if you build a plugin for ChatGPT, it's interoperable for stuff in Bing, Dynamics 365 Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot, Windows Copilot, Oh, yeah, Windows is getting its own copilot, meaning you'll have a specifically trained OpenAI model built into Windows that'll help you get more done more quickly. And as I said, it'll work with ChatGPT and Bing plugins. It's basically Cortana, but good. Anyway, it'll be available in June. And if you build your own plugin for Azure's OpenAI service, that same standard will also work with all the various Microsoft copilots and ChatGPT and, and all that stuff. I actually think that extensibility is a really big story with LLMs, and I'm really glad that we're seeing an open standard approach getting adopted across a lot of different services. And so I've got links in the show notes and the description down below for more on that. Another huge announcement at Microsoft Build was all around an initiative called DevHome. And if I'm being honest, I think I was more excited about some of this stuff than, than even some of the AI stuff. Over the last five years or so, the Windows team has been making a lot of efforts to make Windows a better place for developers, thanks to things like WSL, or the Windows Subsystem for Linux, and the Windows Terminal. But DevHome is a new experience and is specifically designed for developers, and it's designed to make it easy uh, to do things like configure your new machine the way that you want, to do builds and uh, have better performance more quickly, and there's even a really great looking dashboard to track all of your development stuff. I don't have enough time to go into all the details of when Git configurations, DevDrive, and DevHome. Those are the three big pillars, but check out the links below to learn more because seriously, like this is the stuff that I love. I'm primarily a Mac user, but when I see Windows doing things like this and knowing how hard the team is working on these initiatives, I get really excited. DevHome is also open source and it's on GitHub, so they're looking for your feedback, which I love and, and we'd love to see it. Also, Windows Terminal is getting GitHub Copilot X integration, so that's really slick. And, and as I said, I've got details and all this stuff uh, linked down below. Last couple of quick hits on Microsoft Build. There is Microsoft Fabric, and this is basically like OneDrive for your data. I think that's how Arun described it to me. And it pulls in all of Microsoft's data analytics stuff into one platform, and it can even pull in things from you know Amazon S3 and soon Google Cloud. Uh, at the keynote, Satya said that Fabric is the biggest thing Microsoft has done with the data since MS SQL, so that's pretty huge. Also, also, GitHub Advanced Security is now available for Azure DevOps in public preview. And this is great because in my completely unbiased opinion as a GitHub employee, GitHub Advanced Security is just completely badass and it's a really great way to manage security testing tools and to be alerted when things might be going wrong as early as possible. And you can now do this in Azure repos too. And finally, finally, there is a new open source tool called the Semantic Kernel. And this is actually really cool. The team describes it as a lightweight and open source orchestration SDK that lets you easily mix and match AI prompts with conventional programming languages like C Sharp and Python. So it's evolving super quickly. It is available on GitHub. I've got links down below, but you can actually use it to orchestrate AI and to write AI things into your programs um, from a bunch of different sources, including OpenAI, Azure, even Hugging Face. And there's a Visual Studio Code extension, so 
a semantic kernel is great. Moving on, let's do our picks of the week. So first, I wanna talk about my project spotlight. And this is my favorite open source project that I found on GitHub this week. This one is from GitHub user, uh, I think it's Patty, P-A-T-T-E. Anyways, Patrick Recker, and it's called Fly Tail Scale Exit. And basically it's instructions and a collection of scripts to easily create your own VPN using Tailscale. And Tailscale is one of my favorite services and, and a company that I've talked about here before. It also uses fly.io and GitHub. And this is the scenario that Patrick describes. He says, did you ever need to wormhole to another place on the internet, but you don't trust the shady VPN providers with ads all over YouTube? Well, why not run it yourself? This guide helps you set up a globally distributed and easily shareable VPN service for you and your friends. Um, super fun fact about this, I actually toyed around with wanting to kind of build something like this myself using Tailscale, uh, but I didn't have the time and Patrick has now done all the work for me and all of you. So I'm really excited about setting this up and then sharing it with others like my mom and dad. This rules. And uh, great, great job there. And now it is time for my pick of the week. Okay, so this actually came out last week, but we didn't have a show, and it's so cool that I want to share it anyway. So, if you are older than 30, you might remember a phone called the BlackBerry, and this was basically the, the coolest smartphone there was before the iPhone. It had an amazing keyboard, there was a messaging system called BBM, and between 2006 and like maybe like mid-2008, it was peak nerd. Anyway, um, Eric uh, Mikovoski, who was the creator of the dearly departed smartwatch Pebble, and he's the CEO of a unified messaging platform called Beeper, has released a little side project for hackers called the Beepberry. And this is basically a, a handheld device with a keyboard that's configured to do one thing and one thing only, run all of your Beeper messengers. And he, he did this in conjunction with SQMFI and it rules, like just, just look at how good this looks. It uses Raspberry Pi Zero W under the hood, there's a great e-paper LCD, and it has a tactile keyboard. It's $79, available for pre-order now. You are going to need to hack this together yourself using things on their GitHub repo. You'll want to 3D print a case if you don't want to hold the boards together with like a rubber band. But I love it. I, I obviously pre-ordered one as soon as it was available, and I cannot wait to use GitHub Copilot to uh, write a Brick Breaker clone so that I can really live my college days, because that's, that's what I did on my BlackBerry primarily. What's your favorite pre-iPhone smartphone? Let me know in the comments down below, or let me know your thoughts on Microsoft Build or anything else we discussed, and, and you can do that in the comments. We'd love to hear your feedback. That's gonna do it for me. If you like this episode, please give us a like on YouTube. It actually helps us out, helps feed the algorithm. And subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. I'm off next week for Render ATL, but I will see you next time.